The Japanese government has released a draft of its new energy strategy. The document calls for a non-nuclear country. But the United States has expressed deep concern over the move. The policy chief of Japan's ruling Democratic Party is visiting Washington. Seiji Maihara met U.S. Deputy Secretary of Energy Daniel Ponman to brief him on the draft. The Japanese government will take various steps and direct resources to halt all reactors by the 2030s. Japan's future energy policy will be based on three principles. The operation of any nuclear plant will be limited to 40 years. Suspended facilities will need to have their safety confirmed before they can resume operations. And no new reactors will be built. But the policy insists that nuclear reactors should be used as a transitional measure. Maihara and Ponman urged Japan to minimize the negative impact of the policy on fossil fuel prices. Ponman reportedly said Japan should try to reduce its stocks of plutonium from spent nuclear fuel. Maihara said Ponman also told him the U.S. will support Japan's efforts to diversify its energy sources. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata is here to give us more insight on this story. Tomoko, tell us what this new nuclear commission will do. Yeah, let me give you three points. First, members will make emergency plans for utilities in the event of a severe nuclear accident. And second, they will also be in charge of drawing up new nuclear safety measures for local municipalities. Third, the Commission will be tasked with deciding on restarting reactors in Japan. You know, right now, 50 of 52 units are offline. Japanese leaders say their decision to separate the Commission from the Industry Ministry, which was promoting nuclear power, will make this watchdog more independent than the body it's replacing the nuclear and industrial safety agency. Mm. The government originally planned to set up this new commission as early as April this year. It's now September. What's right. the reason for the delay? Well, one of the reasons was discussion over the selection of the committee members. Prime Minister Noda's plan to appoint the chairperson and the other four positions has been prolonged because of resistance not only by the opposition but also by members of his ruling Democratic Party. They said the experts in the list included people with strong connections with nuclear-related businesses. Noda gave up passing the personnel bill during the last session of the Diet and decided to appoint the members by himself, according to law. And we won't find un until next week who will fill, fill those positions. Mm -hmm. This delay in starting up the commissions has set the Japanese government back by five months, and it is still waiting to establish new nuclear safety guidelines a year and a half after the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Experts from outside will be looking inside Tokyo Electric Power Company. They'll reevaluate the company, including its approach to management and safety. A former chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission will take part. So will a member of the DIA panel investigating the accident. For more on this story, we're joined by NHK World's Kaho Izumitani. So, Kaho, tell us, what will these experts be doing? Well, any executive or manager will tell you how difficult it is to change a corporate culture, but that's exactly what these people are taking on. The focus on the management's overconfidence in preventing nuclear accidents and their unwillingness to accept criticism. The experts were chosen because they were not seen as influenced by Japanese nuclear industry. So executives at TEPCO hope to project transparency by getting them on board. Mm. What more can you tell us about the former chairman of the U.S. Regulatory Commission? What does he bring to the table? Well, his name is Dale Klein. He has a track record in promoting nuclear safety. He took over the NRC two months after 9-11. Now, this was when many worried that terrorists could target reactors, which means it could lead to a station blackout and ultimately a meltdown. Klein led a project to upgrade safety measures and people listened to him. Now few people had considered this scenario in Japan. So Klein is in a position to help TEPCO take nuclear safety to the next level. TEPCO managers took 
all of the reactors offline uh, after the accident, but they're planning to restart a plant on the sea coast, uh, the sea of uh, Japan coast, rather, possibly even uh, next year. Will it happen, do you think? Well, people at TEPCO realize the need to do a better job in convincing the residents about the role of nuclear power. The company's image, as you know, has been tarnished for the past 18 months, and many attempts to improve that image have backfired. We understand we have no right to restart nuclear power plants without appropriate safety measures in place. I spoke with one nuclear expert. Hiroshi Miyano has been critical about the safety culture at TEPCO. They've not defined the risks they should prepare for. They had relied on their own myth that everything was perfectly safe. Now, they need to clarify who is ultimately responsible. Without that, there's no way to restart nuclear plants. The most important thing is to change their corporate management culture. It's fair to say TEPCO leaders want to use this panel to regain the public's trust. But the ultimate question, I think, is whether there's a will to change a corporate culture or if this is more of a strategy to ease the process of restarting nuclear plants. Fuck you, Governor upset about new energy policy. The governor of a prefecture hosting more nuclear power plants than anywhere in Japan has criticized the government's new energy policy. The policy calls for scrapping nuclear power by the 2030 seconds. Fuck you, Governor Issei Nishikawa met Senior Vice Industry Minister Seisha Makano on Thursday to hear a draft version of the policy. The government is to work out its final version on Friday, Nishikawa said Prime Minister Yoshihiko Nada told Japan it could not survive without nuclear power when he decided to restart two reactors in Fuku Prefecture in June. The governor said Nada also insisted that nuclear generation is important for national security. Nishikawa said if the government wants to decommission the reactors in his prefecture, it must remove all the spent nuclear fuel kept there immediately, and restore the plant sites back to their original state. The new policy would put a 40-year operational limit on nuclear reactors, and pledge no new reactors. Aomori calls for more nuclear recycling An official from a northern Japanese prefecture hosting spent nuclear fuel reprocessing plants has asked the government to continue nuclear fuel recycling calling it essential for the country's new energy strategy. Aomori Assembly member Kazuhiko Matsuo met two cabinet ministers on Thursday in Tokyo. The government is to work out the new policy on Friday. Matsuo asked Economy and Industry Minister Yukio Adano to ensure that the policy clearly states Japan's need to continue nuclear recycling. Adano said the government must keep its promise to Aomori that it will not be a final storage site for spent nuclear fuel. In another meeting, Nuclear Power Policy Minister Goshi Hasano said the government wants to consult Aomori about nuclear recycling. 
Matsuo told reporters that he's glad the ministers said they want to ensure that the government will not betray the prefecture's trust. The China Syndrome It's about people, people who lie, and people faced with the agony of telling the truth. Right. People like Kimberly Wells, a television reporter paid to smile, not to think. A few words about a veterinarian who makes house calls on sick fish. Or is it aquarium calls? Richard Adams, a cameraman who never learned how to play by the rules. Wait till you get that other room, get that radiation all over that cute little body. Jack Goodell, an engineer who knows too much to tell the truth. In anything that man ever does, there's some element of risk, right? Well, that's why we have what we call defense in depth. And cares too much to lie. No accident. It will start with a tremor in a nuclear power plant. Where it will end will depend on three people. I would say you're probably lucky to be alive. Same for the rest of Southern California. Jane Fonda. Let's face it, you didn't get this job because of your investigative abilities. Kimberly, don't fight it. Jack Lemon. There was a vibration. Michael Douglas. I don't know that accident is the right word. Accident is the right word. The China Syndrome. The harder they try, the more resistance they meet. They've got their own security men. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you want me to make it any clearer? The closer they get, no. the more threatening it becomes. No. The China Syndrome. Today, only a handful of people know what it really means. And they're scared. Soon, you will know. The China Syndrome. A significant quantity of radioactive cesium, likely from the crippled Fukushima No. 1 nuclear power plant, has turned up in subsea mud about 200 kilometers away, near the mouth of the Shinanagawa River on Japan's northwestern coast. Scientists said samples taken in 2011 at Nagaokat, Niigata Prefecture, contained concentrations of up to 460 becquerels per kilogram of dry mud, a level comparable to that detected at a river mouth in Tokyo Bay last year. Some isotopes of cesium are heavily radioactive. Readings are dozens of times higher than contamination detected after past atmospheric nuclear tests.